Wheatstone Bridge, and what is the balancing condition of Wheatstone Bridge? But uh, today we will prove uh, the balancing condition of Wheatstone Bridge. So Wheatstone Bridge is the combination of five resistances like this. Here is one resistance. Here is one resistance. Here is one resistance. Hello, Matthew. How are you? Matthew, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, how are you? Fine, sir. Okay. So we have this topic now: derivation of balancing condition of Wheatstone Bridge. Okay. So Wheatstone Bridge is this uh, like this. I'm just drawing it. And uh, suppose a uh, this is the resistance R1. This is resistance R2. R2. This is R3, and this is R4. Suppose uh, earlier I have connected here R5 resistance. This time, instead of R5 resistance, I am connecting a galvanometer. And gal galvanometer tells uh, gal galvanometer is used to measure the current. Okay. If there is a deflection in this galvanometer, then it means that. in this wire the current is flowing if there is no deflection so you can say that uh, no current is flowing here and g this capital g is the resistance of the gal galvanometer i am supposing okay and we have connected this with some power source we have connected it this with some power source so you know okay so this is the positive terminal of the cell this is the negative terminal of the cell this is the cell suppose i have connected and if suppose i current is flowing from this cell and this i current will go like this like this like this like this and at this the junction point this current will be divided in two parts in this branch and in this branch this current will be divided suppose i1 current is going in this branch so the remaining current I minus I one current, I minus I one current will go in this branch. If I is coming like this and this I is dividing into two branches, okay, then I one is going. I am supposing that I one is going in this branch. So the remaining current will be I minus I one, and that is going in this branch. okay now throughout this wire the current will be i1 and throughout this wire the current will be i minus i1 now here is the junction point and here are two branches one branch is this another branch is this so here the current will be divided so i am supposing suppose i suffix g current is going in the galvanometer i suffix g is the current that is going in the galvanometer this is the galvanometer and resistance of the galvanometer is g so the remaining current i1 minus ig will go in this branch i1 minus ig 
will go in this branch and same current will flow through this branch i1 minus ij okay now you can see this junction this current is coming from here and this current is coming from here so all these both these current will meet at this junction so you can add this current plus this current you will get the resultant current as i minus i1 plus i2 okay because the direction of both the currents uh, means they are coming towards this junction so we will add so same amount of current will flow here also i minus i1 plus ig now when and now come to this junction point this current is coming in this direction and this current is coming in this direction and when you will add both these current you will get the current i you can add when you will add this and this then you will get the current i uh matthew have we completed this uh, thing or not earlier so we, discussed I, bridge, we have discussed uh, this derivation already yeah yeah nawal and nafisa i have discussed this earlier also do you have any idea i think i have not discussed Yes, so you discussed the other weights on bridge, right? No, I have discussed this. Uh, just a minute. This bridge, I have discussed. Okay? Yes, sir, that one. But I uh, that see that I know that I I have discussed this. This is just the topic weight stone bridge. But now I am discussing the topic. Uh, derivation of balancing condition of weight stone bridge means what i uh, what i am discussing here balance, what was the valence balancing condition if r1 by r2 is equal to r3 by r4 is there then it means then it means that there is no current through this through through this resistor means ig will become zero okay so you can see here also this is the wedstone bridge na instead of r5 there i have connected a galvanometer so no problem uh, instead of r5 you will take the resistance capital g so this is the condition if this condition is followed means if r1 divided by r2 is equal to r3 divided by r4 if this condition is will be followed then there will be no current in r5 okay i have told you this earlier now i am what i am doing i am proving this condition okay i am proving this condition yes sir yeah from where this has come so with the help of kirchhoff law i am proving that and unfortunately my camera is not working today and there will be a requirement of camera because this chapter is just about to finish and when i will dis discuss wires for severs law in magnetics then the, for the direction purpose it will be required so okay just first see this then we will discuss what we what we should do this derivation has already appeared in your exam also so first you have to what you have to do you know this thing already means you have to prove this r1 divided by r2 equal to r3 divided by r4 if ig is equal to 0 okay so now what we will do we will just choose the point points in the loop suppose i am choosing this is point a this is point b this is point c and this is point d okay so these are the points i am taking 
take here C and take here B and take here D. So now we have uh, two loops. One loop is A, B, D, A. A, B, D, A is one loop. And another loop, loop is B, C, D, B. Two loops we have. Okay. And there is one another loop you can say A, B, C, D, A. Means we have so three loops we have. So what I will do? Uh, first, I will choose a loop. So I am choosing the loop. Mm. This A, B, D, A. A, B, D, A. Why I am choosing a loop? Because I have to apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay. Then I will get an equation. So suppose uh, I have choose the loop in, and the direction of the loop is this. The direction means I will apply the Kirchhoff's law. Like I will move in this direction. Like from A to B, I will move. From B to D, I will move. From D to A, I will move. Okay. So I have choose A, B, D, A. So I am moving from A to B. So from A to B, when you will move, you will write minus I1 into R1 because you are moving in the direction of current. From B to D, you will write minus IG into G. And from D to A, you will write I minus I1 into R3 of minus. Minus I minus I1 into R3. And this is the voltage drop here. This is the this is the voltage drop here. And this is the voltage drop here. And this all the voltage drops equal to zero. All the voltage is, is zero. Now we already know there is IG and this IG is equal to zero. Now you will put IG in this here, in this equation. You will put, then you will get minus i1 r1 and this ig is zero so this whole term will become zero you will get this minus i minus i1 into r3 is equal to zero so this will become minus i1 r1 is equal to i minus i1 and r3 uh, Just wait. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, we have done a mistake. And can anyone tell me what mistake we have done? See this. I'm, I am giving you the hint. Please be interactive in the class. I am moving from D to A, na? from D to A. I am moving from D to A in the opposite direction of the current I am moving. And direction of current is in this direction. So na? A to B, then D to A. Uh, no. Nee. Well, uh, this is the loop I have chosen. Na? A, B, D, A. A, B. Okay, so yeah, yeah. A, B. D to A. D to A. Just see D to A. When you will move from D to A, you are moving in the opposite direction of the current now. So you will take here positive sign. Why we are taking positive sign here? Because the direction opposite to current is the direction of increasing potential now. So whenever there is an increase in potential, we take positive sign of voltage. Okay. It means you are not getting what is Kirchhoff's law and all that. Guys, are you getting or not? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, this is our confusion yes, on the getting... group list directory. That's what. This is not. Uh, uh, this is not a typical thing. This is very easy thing. So here we have to take a positive sign. Okay. So that is why here will become negative, and this negative and negative will be cancel out. Okay. So I will get this I one divided by I minus I one is equal to R three divided by. R one and this is your equation number one. We will get. Now, <clears throat> if you will apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop, we have this loop, na? V C D V. Okay. So, Nafisa, tell me in which direction you want to go from where? Uh, from B. Okay. You can choose any direct direction. Means from B. Do do you want to move like this B C D V or B D B C D V? Okay, B C D V. You can choose this direction also. Any direction you can choose. You know, your answer will remain same. So just yes. choose the loop direction of the loop as B C D V. This is looking complicated, but not complicated when your focus hundred when you are hundred percent focused on this. So we are choosing B C D V. V C D V. This loop I am choosing. So just see this. Okay. And when you are moving from V to C, there is only one resistance and there is only one voltage will be there, and the voltage will be I minus I G into R two. And sine will be positive or negative, na pisa? Here. Negative. Very good. So I will take here minus of I one minus I one minus I G I G into R two. Okay. Yes. Sir. Now when you will move from C to D, so we will take the positive, positive. sign. Yes, yeah. sir. Means now you are getting okay. I minus I one plus I G into R four. And finally, we are moving from D to B, so positive. we will take again. We will take the positive sign. I G and G is the resistance of galvanometer, and this all equal to zero according to the uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now put here also. You will put I G, I suffix G is equal to zero because we have to prove this condition, and with the help of this, we will prove this. So now. When you will put it, then you will get here minus I one minus zero. Instead of I G, you will put zero, and this is R two plus this is I minus I one plus zero R four plus uh, this sum will become zero because I G is zero. When you will multiply zero with G, this will become zero. So you can write this zero and equal to zero. So finally, you will get minus I one into R two and equal to minus I minus I one into R four. Okay, and this minus and minus will be cancel out. You will get I one divided by I minus I one equal to R four divided by R two, and this is your equation number second. Now observe the equation number one and equation number second. When you will observe the equation number one, this is your equation number one. This is your equation number two. Just observe both the equations. This thing and this thing is equal. This thing and this thing is equal. When you compare both the equations, so you can say if left hand side of both the equations is equal, then right hand side of the equation will of the both the equation will also be equal. Okay. When you will compare, this is simple mathematics. One and two. 
so you can write left hand side is equal then our, our right hand side of both equation means you will get r3 by r1 is equal to r4 by r2 now what can you do uh, just reverse we can reverse both the i can write this as r1 by r3 is equal to r2 by r4 there is no problem if suppose 1 by 5 is written as uh, uh, 10 by 2 if 1 by 5 is written as 10 by 2 then can i write 5 by 1 is equal to 2 by 10 means both the things will remain same okay so i can write this like this so and one more thing you can do this r2 can come here and this r3 can go there so write this r1 divided by r2 is equal to r3 divided by r4 so in this way you can prove this condition of this is the balancing condition see here r1 by r2 r3 by r4 so this condition is the balancing condition Okay, this is the why this is balancing condition because okay because uh, there is a device meter bridge so in meter wave bridge uh, there is a jockey and all that things uh, but unfortunately meter bridge is removed from your syllabus. so i i am not going to discuss that so in meter bridge what happens uh, the jockey uh, moves throughout the wire when you will see the um, meter bridge okay and there is a point on the wire where the uh, deflection on the wire uh, means the deflection in the galvanometer is zero means there is no current in the galvanometer so b say that there is a balancing condition okay and for the balancing condition the ratio of r1 and r2 is equal to the ratio of r3 by r2 so the, so this is i think of three marks question you will get your, in your exam so just you can copy this all of you and make this diagram on the top so this derivation is very easy and you can get three marks easily so all of you just please note it down my camera is not working today i and one thing more in this loop also we are moving in this direction i mean this is a clockwise direction please copy this and almost we have completed 99% of this chapter after this chapter there will be a very interesting chapter moving charges and magnetism and for that i required camera for the direction okay if you have written then you can ask me to scroll down and if you want to ask any question regarding this then please ask me and please write the heading also derivation of balancing condition of wheatstone bridge
Nafisa, are you writing? Yes, sir, writing. Absolutely. Okay, fine. Fine, fine. And please make the diagram uh, accurately. Try to make the diagram accurately. Try to show the direction of current accurately. Otherwise, uh, if you if any direction will be reversed, then whole thing will change. This is galvanometer connected, and G is the resistance of galvanometer. I have supposed. G is the resistance of galvanometer uh, Matthew yes sir Hello. Uh, which chapter is going on in your school? AC current, sir. Alternating current. And yeah. Naval, Naval, what about you? Means which chapter is going in your school? We are almost done with alternating current. Uh, which chapter? Your voice is not. Alternating not getting... current. And Nafisa, what about you? Sir, same as Matthew, AC current. Very good. Thank you all. After this chapter, we are moving in the field of magnet. This is this was the field of electricity. Now we will we are going to enter in the field of magnet. So this is the whole branch, electromagnetism. Branch of Sir, physics. Can you scroll? Uh, Matthew and Naval, uh, should I scroll? Yes, sir. Uh, wait some one second. Okay. And if you have any yeah, doubt in, in the symbols, if you have any doubt, doubt in the symbols, suppose you are not getting my writing, then you can also ask me. So just copy this. If you are not getting, uh, sometimes if you are not getting my writing and all that, but th then what you should do before asking me, you should apply your mind or logic what has been written here okay suppose i have written like this somewhere uh, 50 divided by uh, 10 is equal to uh, 5 so if you are suppose i have made the thing like this this so this is 5 now so means you will you can understand that this will be 10 so this thing i won't do And please, uh, one step topic is left heating effect of current. After finishing that topic, we will start the uh, moving charges and magnetism, or you can say magnetic effect of current. Different different names are given in different different books, but according to the NCRT, it is chapter number four, moving charges and magnetism. So, uh, Nafisa, in your school, uh, your teacher ha have completed the meter bridge or left the meter bridge? Do you have the idea of, of, of that? Sir, can you repeat the question? Uh, Someone I is knocking at my door. Okay, no, no problem. I am saying that meter bridge has done in your school or teacher just left that? Uh, 
we did meter bridge actually for the practicals. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, meter bridge was removed from your syllabus. Is removed from your syllabus for this year. Yes, sir. But we still have to write it in our practical record. But so, yeah. but but for the practical purpose, you have to do the experiment of meter yes, bridge. Sir. And very interesting experiment. Yes, sir. Yeah. I have also done that in my 12th class. So you're talking about a lab experiment, right? Yeah. Meter bridge right. is a device to uh, measure the unknown resistance. Yes, sir. This, yeah. You have to connect the resistances and you have to... Yeah, and then you have to... Uh, you have a... Uh, you have a galvanometer and a jockey and you will move that jockey like that then uh, you will get okay should i scroll down yes okay just copy this and we are going to finish miss this is finished now and we will discuss the heating effect of current heating of effect of current i have told you uh, in the chapter capacitance also When completed, you can tell me. Unfortunately, my camera is not working today and today is the requirement of the camera. When I will tell you the right hand thumb rule and Yes, sir. Finish. Complete it, all of you. So we have this potentiometer. See, first see this. What is this? This is potentiometer now, and this potentiometer is not in your syllabus now. Okay. And again, there is a uh, meter bridge. This is not in. This is deleted. Okay. For the theoretical purpose, this is deleted, and so no need to the uh, do these two questions. Uh, now, next topic is heating effect of current. This topic is very, very easy topic and you already know it. What is the heating effect of current? So, heating effect of current means whenever the current will pass through, the, through a resistance, then heat will be produced. This is the heating effect of current. Okay. So, and uh, uh, when we were discussing the drift velocity, I have told you uh, in detail that what happens uh, what happens inside the conductor what happens in the, inside the conductor inside a conductor uh, there is a flow of electron with some uh, velocity known as the drift velocity and in the path of the electron uh, when the electron moves okay so there are ions also there are ions also and with that ion there is a collision of electrons there are the collisions of electrons and we already know uh, there are million millions of electrodes in a conductor. So due to that collision, heat will be generated. Okay. So this is the cause of heating effect of current. So I will explain you with the help of a circuit. Just focus on the screen. Very easy topic this is. And this is the last topic also of this chapter. Uh, suppose here is a battery or a cell I have connected. And here is a resistance R. Okay. This is the external resistance here. And this is a cell or a battery. And if this is the connection, then we have the current also here. And this current will be same as the wire is same. And the current is going to, uh, into this resistance. And I have told you that whenever the current will pass through the resistance, heat will be produced. Okay. So the example, you can take your laptop or your mobile phone in your laptop. Why, why your laptop is heating right now? Uh, can anyone tell me why the laptop is heating? Any one of you? 
uh, due to the current generator and the resistance uh, heat is generated yeah nabal tell me why your laptop is heating right now can you tell me you do the heating effect okay okay fine so uh, what happens you can write when current passes through resistance heat is generated not generated you should not write heat is generated but you should write here heat is dissipated heat is dissipated and this heat is a part of electrical energy supplied means for us this heat dissipation is a loss okay actually what we are doing we are supplying the electrical energy we are supplying the electrical energy but unfortunately there is a heat dissipation okay so deep that so and if you want to write what is the cause of the uh, heating effect of current why the wire heats up when the current flows so you can write due to collision due to collision of electrons with ions in a conductor in a conductor mm okay a part of electrical energy dissipates at as heat a part of electrical energy dissipated as heat so here i will define a term power and i will represent this power with capital p so what is power power is a rate of heat energy dissipated per unit time okay power is a rate of heat energy dissipated means heat energy dissipated per unit time so power is you can write heat uh energy that is dissipating and you will take the time for which the heat energy is dissipating so power is you can say simply power is equal to heat divided by time and uh <clears throat> there are the for three formulas for calculating the power dissipation okay so power dissipation and this power and power dissipation is same thing here p so power dissipation the first formula is v square by r second formula is i square r and third formula is v and i and all the simple all the symbols you already know this v is the voltage r is the resistance and i is the current we have discussed these symbols many many times so i am not writing here so if you want to calculate the heat energy i am representing the heat energy with uh, capital h okay so heat energy how you will calculate the heat energy you will just multiply this power with time okay power with time and i am supposing time as a small t so power into time is the heat energy 
if someone is asking what is heat energy so then you can calculate with this formula v square y r into t i square r into t is equal to v i into t so this is a formula of power and this is a formula of heat for the heat you have to just multiply power with time okay okay fine uh, now uh, here we are talking about the power or the heat energy is dissipating with respect to time Me means uh, heat per unit time was constant okay uh, suppose uh, uh, what is means if power is variable then what you will do i will explain it just wait if power dissipation is variable means what is the meaning of variable means with respect to time the amount of power power dissipation in the wire or the circuit either increasing or decreasing okay this is the meaning of variable power with respect to time as the time passes okay as the time passes it will take like 0 second you have first then you have 2 seconds then you have 4 seconds then 4 0 seconds the power dissipation was uh, was 20 watt and for 2 seconds after 2 seconds the power dissipation becomes uh, 80 watt okay like this you have the power dissipation of 160 watt then if this kind of power dissipation in your circuit then you can say there is a variable power dissipation so if the terms are variable and you want to calculate the amount of heat dissipated then you will just use the integration okay so this formula you will apply and okay this is finished uh, now talking about the si unit and what is the full form of si matthew uh, system international french word for international system. international system of units okay no problem si units this is just the basic question inter uh, si unit si unit mean international system of unit so it, si unit we um, in the 90% cases or 95% cases we use only si unit so si unit of power what yeah w a t t watt james watt this is uh, on the name of uh, on the basis of means there was a scientist james watt who made a steam engine okay so this is watt and this is also given by you can calculate the unit uh from here unit of heat is joule if you know then good unit of heat is joule and unit of time as a unit of time is second so joule per second is also the unit as a unit so joule per second okay just copy this we will solve our question then this chapter will be <clears throat> and i think this topic is very very easy and after this we will solve a very good numerical should i zoom in if you are not able to write no need sir okay navar are you getting what i am teaching yes sir okay. 
if you have any doubt and you want to ask the question any question then uh, not any question means i i want to say that about this syllabus then you can ask me okay sir okay because uh, you cannot uh, learn the physics uh, by only watching the videos or just like you are writing the things and i am teaching for uh, the understanding of the physics there should be a discussion also the things that you are studying right now uh, are given by the scientists and those scientists was worked really 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 hard to get these things this thing means the i have written what is the cause of heating effect of current but you can think how much time will be taken by a scientist to find that there will be a wire and there will be the electron in a wire and all that okay Two thousand years ago, we came to know about the electricity. Two thousand years ago, okay, electricity and magnetism. The things that you are, we are discussing. So Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity, right? And that was like fourteen nineteen. Uh, actually, uh. It is not clear that who actually discovered the electricity. So, uh, not the Benjamin Franklin. Oh, okay, sir. There are many many scientists in uh, this. Covered the electricity means electricity is not just as uh, dis uh, discovered like electricity is this. First, they found that uh, if you will study the NCERT of twelfth uh, class in the beginning, you will get there. Uh, there is a discussion about the charge. Uh, from where the charge has arise. Okay, so by rubbing, uh, you will get. some property and that property is known as charge okay and due to the charge the electricity will be means means in the discovery of the electricity a number of scientists are involved okay someone uh, founded the electron someone founded the proton rutherford nuke and rutherford and all that rutherford founded the nucleus na so there are many many scientists that and uh, And and for the magnetism part, you will see there are the scientists Oersted and Ampere and Faraday. These are the scientists who discovered it. Okay, so have you completed this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, just note it down. Okay, just note this down. And just remember that you have. Three formulas of power, and you cannot apply. Uh, means you can apply any formula anywhere, but you have to think before applying which formula you will apply. You are going to apply. Okay. For saving your time. I don't know. Think that today we will be up to 
राइट हैंड थम रूल फॉर द डायरेक्शन ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड बिकॉज वी हैव ओनली हाफ एन आवर and the rate of heat flow oh sorry ha huh, rate of heat flow is also the uh, power uh, you can write here for the definition rate of heat dissipation so uh, completed all of you yes sir Naval. Yes, sir. Yes. Nafisa. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now we have this last question, and this question I will say is a really good question. First, read the question properly. We have two wires of same mass having the ratio of length. Density ratio is given, and resistivity ratio is given. are connected one by one to the same voltage supply after that they are saying the rate of heat dissipation the rate of heat dissipation okay in the first wire is 10 watt find the rate of heat dissipation in the second wire okay just see how i am solving it we have two wires suppose this is one wire i am taking this cylindrical wire okay if not mentioned in the question then you will always take cylindrical wire and they are saying uh, this wire is connected with a voltage supply and here is another wire of different kind and this wire is also connected with a voltage supply suppose v is the voltage supply and they are saying the voltage supply is same and they are connecting it one by one means first they have connected this first wire and after that they ha they have connected second wire but the voltage supply is same so i am supposing l1 is the length of this wire and area of cross section is wire is a1 here also a2 is the area of cross section of this wire and l2 is the length of this wire and mass of both the wires i am supposing m is the mass of this wire and m is the mass of this wire because mass is same so i am taking m for this and m for this no problem okay fine mass is same and what is given in the question ratio of length is given means l1 by l2 is given so given things right here l1 by l2 is given as 1 by 2 and one thing more given density so density i will represent with sigma 1 by sigma 2 and this density ratio is given as 1 ratio 3 1 ratio 3 and one thing is also given resistivity and what is the symbol of resistivity this rho r h o rho rho 1 by rho 2 is also given as 2 uh, ratio 1 okay this is given to us and sigma is the density here i am taking sigma as a density okay and they are saying that rate of heat dissipation in first wire what is the rate, rate of heat dissipation means power dissipation means power power dissipation in the first wire i am supposing it with p1 is given as 10 watt and we have to calculate the power dissipation in this second wire power dissipation in first wire is given and this is the given data and with the help of this given data this mass Uh, given data means masses are equal and this data we have to calculate this power 
and the numerical this uh, and the numerical is a game of logic and thinking how you are going to apply apply the logic that is the way so what i will do uh, first i will start from power okay just write the p1 in terms of formula so you have three formulas of power for see here you have three formulas of power so can anyone tell me which formula should i apply here means for calculating the power so this question which formula should i apply this one this one or this one matthew what do you say um i square i square okay uh, nafisa which formula should i apply no problem you can v just by r v square by r yes. this and naval this one so okay. i square uh, i square r yes okay okay uh, actually we can apply all these formulas but i will apply this v square by r why because you can see the this is this is same the voltage is same and you will get to know at the end of the question not not at the end of the question just you will get to know why i have applied this so if you want to write the power dissipation for this wire one how you will write in terms of b means v square by r you will write v square by r you will write and if you will write p2 then you will write uh, r1 sorry r1 is the resistance of this wire i am taking r1 is the resistance of this wire and r2 is the resistance of this wire too you have to mention the resistance also and uh, v square by r2 okay so what you have to calculate power this this p1 is given to you okay this p1 is given to you in p1 is 10 as this 10 is equal to v square by r and this is p2 so what you should do suppose this is your equation number 1 and this is is your equation number 2 just divide equation uh 1 with 2 so write you will write p2 divided by 10 and when you will write it you will get v square by r2 and after that you will write v square by r1 so this v square and v square will get cancel out and you will get uh, p2 divided by 10 is equal to uh, r1 divided by r2 so that is why i have applied this formula because from here v and v will can give it will get cancel out and solving question for us will become easy now r1 and r2 we have ratio of r1 and r2 we have we have to calculate this ratio of r1 and r2 and now in terms of length and area and resistivity in terms of length and area and resistivity can anyone tell me the formula of resistance uh naval tell me the formula of resistance in terms of the resistivity length and area okay just i am writing hmm. no 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 v y not the v y r the i know the resistance is v y r i but you have to write here we have a formula na in a wire we have this formula c if you want to calculate if you have suppose if you have a wire like this i have told you na in the chapter in this chapter this wire has the length l and area of cross section is a and rho is the resistivity so what is the formula r is equal to rho l divided by a this is the formula na so this formula we will use here so for if you want to write this for r1 then you will write this like this r1 is equal to rho 1 l1 by a1 okay so right here rho 1 l1 by a1 rho 2 l2 by 
and rho rho is the resistivity okay just when you will solve it you will get rho 1 l1 by a1 and this will this thing will be in the numerator so this is a2 for solving the question this basic this is the basic maths and this you should know like for the english speaking or writing you should know a b c d so you for like that you should know this calculation for solving this question and this is rho 2 and l2 now what you should do just arrange in the form of ratio arrange this in the form of here is rho 1 and here is rho 2 so you have this now p2 divided by 10 so you can write this uh this p2 divided by 10 you have now and uh, this is equal to this so you can write this rho 1 by rho 2 rho 1 by rho 2 multiplied by you have l1 by l2 you have l1 by l2 multiplied by you have a2 by a1 a2 by a1 now you already have rho 1 by rho 2 2 by 1 just put it here Uh, 2 by 1 multiplied by l1 by l2 you have l1 by l2 l when you will put you will get 1 by 2 you will get 1 by 2 but uh, you do not have this a2 by a1 you do not have a2 by a1 so this 2 and 2 will get cancel out and this p2 divided by 10 is equal to a2 divided by a1 this is equation number 3 you have now can anyone give me the idea how we will calculate the ratio of the area of this two wire of these two wires anyone you can check the question also okay no problem i am telling see here something is given same mass is given na with the help of this same mass we will calculate this suppose if you want to uh, first you should know what is mass mass is equal to volume into density okay mass is equal to volume into density okay for wire 1 suppose for by a one you want to calculate the mass m m is the mass so first you have to calculate the volume and density you already know so what is what is the volume for the wire one matthew how can you if you have this cylindrical wire and area of cross, cross section and length is given what is the volume matthew A area you be like Area yeah very good a1 by a1 into l1 yeah. a1 into l1 okay very good a1 into l1 and sigma 1 is the density and mass for the second wire for second wire uh mass is volume into density and volume of second wire is a2 into l2 and sigma 2 and these both the masses are equal so i can equate this this equation and this equation given in the question so i can write a1 l1 sigma 1 a2 l2 sigma 2 now you have to calculate what you have to you have to calculate a2 by a1 okay so if you will calculate this a1 by a2 then here you will have l2 by l1 multiplied by sigma 2 by sigma 1 okay just find what is l2 by l1 l1 by l2 is 1 by 2 so what is l2 by l1 l2 by l1 is 2 this is simple math sir this is 2 na and sigma 2 by sigma 1 uh, sigma 1 by sigma 1 sigma 1 by sigma 2 is 1 by 3 sigma 2 by sigma 1 is 3 so uh, this is uh, 3 you will get 6 but you have to find a2 by a1 so you will just do the reciprocal of this a2 by a1 so by you six. will get 1 by 6 now you can put a2 by a1 in this equation 3 so 
So I am supposing this equation number four. So from equation four and three, or you can say three and four, you will get P two divided by ten. And a two by a one you have to put. This is one by six. So what is the value of power dissipation in the second wire? This is ten divided by six. So you will get five divided by three watt. This is your final answer, and you can also divide it if you want. But this is your, in this way you have to calculate. Means you have to apply the logic here. Okay, just copy this. After that, there will be a new chapter for you. Copy it. And this is wire. This is a cylind cylindrical wire. Okay, cylindrical wire. I have taken here. And I think if this question will appear in your exam, it should be of three marks. And please make one star on this question. When completed, you can ask me to scroll down. Uh, should I scroll down? One second, sir. Wait. Okay, fine. Yes, sir. You can scroll. Are you getting my screen now? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm just scrolling it down. Just scrolling it. Okay. Just copy this.
scroll down wait okay so you have these three formulas of power i have used this formula because i know that this uh, voltage will be cancel out so knowing the formula is not uh, uh, not gives the surety that you can solve the equation means if you know all the formulas then it does not means that you can solve the question question can be solved by applying the logic but with the help of formula and remember this symbol is this row 1 this is the resistivity mm, okay. this row is the resistivity now okay. nafisa should i scroll down yes sir nawal yes sir okay okay uh, matthew yes sir okay okay and mass is equal to volume into density this is a formula you have also studied studied in 9th class and in 11th class in chemistry also i think you have and the answer is this 5 by 3 watt okay 5 by 3 watt these two equations are equal because masses are equal completed all of you yes sir yes sir okay matthew yes sir okay just so i want to show you how the questions will appear in your exam see this this question was appeared in your exam drive the balanced con condition of weight stone bridge okay so what you will do mm, you will do this okay this you will drive like this and other question a heating element is marked as 210 volt 10 volt uh this 30 watt find the resistance of the element when connected to this so uh, this type of question you will get okay so i am not solving this i will give you this piece question in the assignment 
so moving to the next chapter the magnetic effect of current or you can say see first see the weightage of this chapter so there are the unit uh, unit third you can say according to cbsc and in ncert we have uh, the chapter number 4 moving charges and magnetism and magnetism and matter so this is a combined unit you will say this is known as a magnetic effect of current and magnetism and uh, unit number 4 will be electromagnetic induction and alternating current so combination from both these combination means from the unit number 3 from the unit number 3 and unit number 4 uh from this unit and this unit co combinedly you will get uh, the 17 ma mass uh, uh, mass at, at least okay so this is nothing so you will get 17 ma marks from if you will complete unit number 3 and 4 uh, so i think 10 marks from here you will you can get you may get or 7 marks from this what you can get okay but it can vary according to the examiner this is not certain so for see the syllabus you already know the syllabus means this is the syllabus na so when we will study we will get to know what is happening and i want to uh, highlight this that cyclotron is deleted okay cyclotron was earlier the part of your syllabus but now this is deleted okay uh, now uh, we have discussed the uh, electricity uh, first uh, we have discussed the electrostatics in electrostatics uh, we were discussing the charges at rest okay there in electrostatics there there are the charges that are at rest and due to that due to those charges at rest uh, we have got the electric field electric potential okay at etc uh, coming to the current electricity uh, we have discussed the charges in motion and i have told you whenever there will be a motion of charge current will be generated when there will be a motion of charge current will be generated at the same time uh, uh, in that chapter we have also studied in the in the current electricity we have also studied that uh, what is happening inside the conductor what is uh, and different different things like you can say um, heating effect of current also we have Uh, covered in that means uh, mostly we have studied about the current in the second chapter okay but now in the chapter in chapter this i am starting the chapter number 4th of ncert moving charges and magnetism in this chapter what you will study basically uh, there was earlier electric field there was earlier electric field and electric field due to uh, what is the cause of electric field the cause of electric field was the electric charge okay and here in this chapter you will study the magnetic field you will study the magnetic field and as the electric field is produced by the electric charge at rest but when you have a charge in motion or you have a current then with the help of that current the magnetic field can produce okay we will see uh, all these things uh, in this chapter uh, and one thing more uh, in this chapter two laws are very very important means there are two three laws are there first is wired severed law uh, and ampere circuit law we will discuss okay so just write the heading and and one thing i want to tell you one very interesting thing uh, just for the interest of physics uh, from the 2000 years uh, we know about the electricity and magnetism electricity electric field and magnetic field means electricity and magnetism but 2000 years 
ago, um, not two thousand years ago, means two hundred years ago, it came to know that both electricity and magnetism are related to each other. If you have a electricity, then you can produce a magnetic field, and if you have a magnetic field. that you can produce the electricity that you will uh, see an electromagnetic induction okay so just i am starting the chapter number 4 so according to the ncert this is chapter number 4 moving charges moving charges and magnetism moving charges what is the meaning of moving charges moving charges means current so here we will mostly discuss the uh, magnetic field due to the current okay magnetic field due to the current so uh, first thing i want to uh, discuss how the magnetic field uh, can be produced electric field is produced by the charge okay i have told you due to the charge the electric field is produced but here we will first uh, first discuss that how the magnetic field is producing so write the heading sources of magnetic field uh, guys can i take your 10 more minutes okay sir <laughs> if if all you are fine with that then uh, i will take otherwise if you will say then i can leave the class any one of you means i am not saying you should leave the class if all three of you are agree then i will take otherwise we will discuss in the next class if anyone want have some work and so please tell me in the chat chat box or you can speak also okay all are fine with it okay yes, naval are you okay yes sir okay okay just so sources of magnetic field so how the magnetic field is generated means electricity we know uh, means electric field we know from the charge so sources of magnetic field so the first source of magnetic field as i have already told you that if you have a electricity you can produce the magnetic field electricity means current current is the source of magnetic field we will discuss and there is one more source of magnetic field earth okay this we will discuss in natural magnetism this is very introductory introductory lecture earth magnetic field and one more thing we have electronic spin spin and this is the part of basically the quantum mechanics so we will not discuss it okay so mo mostly we will discuss this and after that we will discuss this okay so for the current you can say there are the devices in this that devices are solenoid okay fine so this these are the sources of magnetic field from where you can get the magnetic field now what is magnetic field what is magnetic field this we will discuss there is a term electric field we have discussed so electric field what was the electric field electric field is a space or a region around a charge around a charge when another charge will come will enter into its field it will experience a force okay electric field was that uh, and in the at the same way you can just define the magnetic field you can define the magnetic field like uh 
the space the space around a magnet the space around a magnet in which when another magnet enters experiences a magnetic force this time a magnetic force so uh, what is happening see so i am taking a magnet suppose i am having a magnet this is a magnet i i am having so you know that magnet have two poles north pole and south pole and suppose here is another magnet which is entering so on this magnet if this will enter this is the magnet and if this is the field around the magnet and this another magnet will experience a force magnetic force okay so this is the definition of magnetic field you can write in your exam okay and one more definition if you want to write for the magnetic field you can write uh space around a magnet space around a magnet where its magnetic properties exist so magnetic properties exist means here this is the force is the magnetic property of this magnet so this is existed if you will enter if this magnet will enter in this so talking about the si unit of uh, there are some other names of magnetic field there are some other names of magnetic field uh, so just write this uh, magnetic field also known as magnetic field intensity or magnetic flux density so magnetic field or for the magnetic field you can say intensity of magnetic field like intense electric field intensity or intensity of electric field or there is one more name magnetic flux density like electric flux we have discussed here we will discuss uh, electromagnetic induction we will discuss the electric flux also or in this chapter magnetic flux density talking about the si unit of magnetic field si unit of magnetic field is tesla this is on the name of nikola tesla or 
वीवर पर मीटर स्क्वायर एंड सीजीएस यूनिट CGS unit is Gauss, and this is represented. Gauss is also a, was also a scientist. Okay, so and if you want to convert one Tesla, then one Tesla is equal to ten to the power four Gauss. Okay, just please note it down, and all these things are clear. Means I have told you. What is the deleted portion and all that? Just note it down, and after that we will meet in the next class. So these things I think you already know. I have not told anything that you don't know. And after this we have a topic: bio cyber. law and that is used for calculating the magnetic field at a point due to a current carrying wires element okay please note it down this chapter is very very interesting uh the name of the chapter i have given according to the ncert and this solenoid is a device to uh produce the uh you can say constant magnetic field or uniform magnetic field. we will discuss this on a solenoid in this chapter so it will give a constant magnetic field under electricity right yeah what It only give constant magnetic field under uh, unlimited supply. Yeah, yeah, on, on the axis, on the axis, it is it gives. But actually, what what happens now when we will discuss the solenoid? I will tell you in detail that uh, this cannot give the constant magnetic field throughout the region. This can give only uh, on along the axis. Uh, there are some magnetic field uh, around the region, okay? But uh, th th that. That magnetic field is weak as compared to the magnetic field on the axis. So that is why we can neglect that magnetic field. So okay, this is the reason I am saying that. Got it now? Uh, yes. If you will see, if you will see the uh, magnetic field line due to the solenoid, then you will get that. Okay, just copy this. See this image, Matthew. See this image. Yes, sir. You can see uh, this is the solenoid. Uh, so what happens here? You can see. See this density of magnetic field line here. It is more dense now. Means the yes, most mostly the magnetic field is strong on the axis, but here the magnetic field lines are not that strong. So mostly we say that. this solenoid gives the used to give the uh, uniform magnetic along the axis or okay okay should i scroll down yes yeah yeah so so math nawal and apisa have you got it or not yes sir okay in the next class 
we will discuss the biot sebert law and most important thing in the biot sebert law uh, as you are studying the alternating current means you have completed this chapter so the thing is that the duration part is very very important in magnitude part is you can calculate the magnetic field you know the formula id as sin theta divided by r square but when it comes to the direction there will be a difficulty for the students how to apply the right hand thumb rule and into the board and into the screen and all the directions 